There's no getting away from the fact that humans have had a massive effect on the planet and the animals that we share the planet with. Overpopulation, pollution, burning fossil fuels and deforestation all have a massive effect on the planet. And these physical impacts on our environment have triggered climate change, soil erosion, poor air quality and undrinkable water. These changes have also led to a massive increase in extinctions, as today the current rate of extinction is up to 10,000 times higher than the average historical extinction rates. This is why it's so important that we try and protect and restore the world's wildest areas. And some of the best ways to do this is through conservation and ecological restoration. One great way to restore and protect ecosystems is through rewilding. But rewilding is quite a controversial method. Rewilding is a form of ecological restoration aimed at increasing biodiversity. Rewilding aspires to reduce human influence on ecosystems and aims to create resilient, self-regulating and self-sustaining ecosystems. There are many different types of rewilding, with one of them being passive rewilding. This form of rewilding aims to restore natural ecosystem processes, and one of the ways to do this is by limiting or eliminating direct human management of the landscape. Passive rewilding may not seem like a very effective method at first, but there is one place that's proven how effective it can be. Chernobyl is famous for its nuclear disaster, but strangely this disaster helped its native wildlife to thrive. Because so many people evacuated the area, nature soon took over, and many species are returning to the area after decades of absence. Chevalsky's horses can now be found in Chernobyl, along with larger predators such as lynx and wolves. This just goes to show that nature can bounce back if you give it the chance, and Chernobyl's story is a very inspiring one. Passive rewilding is definitely the least controversial form of rewilding, simply because humans play no part in the process. Some argue that this is the most ethical way to do rewilding, as nature is left to heal itself and humans aren't playing God. Active rewilding is a bit more controversial, and it's used to describe a whole range of rewilding approaches. Some of these approaches involve reintroductions and translocations, and it can even involve habitat engineering and the removal of man-made structures. All of these practices aim to bring back some of the wild areas that this planet once knew, and then benefit the global ecosystem as a whole. Even though some of you may have been unaware of what rewilding was before this video, this form of conservation biology is happening all over the world. One of the places where it's having the biggest impact is in the UK, as famously the UK was once home to many large animals, but today the majority of them have gone extinct in the UK. Rewilding efforts have already brought back some of the species that went extinct in the UK, such as the European bison and the Eurasian beaver. The reintroduction of the beavers has already been a success in the UK, as their numbers have started to slowly increase, and by building dams they have created new wetland habitats for other animals. The bison were only reintroduced into the UK in 2022, but already one of the females has had a calf. These animals play a very important role in maintaining grassland ecosystems, and their actions directly benefit other species. These examples just go to show that reintroductions can benefit the ecosystem, but now we can move on to a more extreme version of rewilding. Pleistocene rewilding is the advocacy of the reintroduction of extant Pleistocene megafauna, Towards the end of the Pleistocene era, around 13,000 to 10,000 years ago, nearly all megafauna of Eurasia, Australia, South and North America dwindled towards extinction. This extinction event is known as the Quaternary Extinction Event, and the loss of megafauna species resulted in the collapse of the density and diversity of fauna across the globe. There were many different complicated reasons for these extinctions across the globe, but we humans played a part in a lot of them. The overhunting of megafauna species pushed them to the brink of extinction, and this led to many of the world's ecosystems suffering. Pleistocene rewilding involves reintroducing species into ecosystems where they once thrived, but of course some of the Pleistocene animals are no longer with us. Many of the Pleistocene animals are extinct and they're gone for good, although there are some very interesting de-extinction projects. As many of the Pleistocene animals went extinct relatively recently, we do still have quite a lot of their DNA. Most de-extinction programs aim to recreate a proxy of an extinct animal, but so far none of these de-extinction projects have been successful. Even though we are unable to bring back some extinct megafauna species, we can reintroduce their relatives. 
Some extinct megafauna have relatives that are still alive today, and other species are the ecological equivalents of extinct megafauna. Introducing these animals into an ecosystem can benefit other species, and it can also help to tackle climate change. One biome that's almost completely disappeared from this planet is known as the Mammoth Steppe, and the Mammoth Steppe was once Earth's most extensive biome. Introducing large grazing animals could help restore the Mammoth Steppe ecosystem, and in doing so slow the melting of the Arctic permafrost. Permafrost is soil or underwater sediment which continuously remains below 0 degrees Celsius. When permafrost melts it releases carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, and these greenhouse gases contribute to climate change. This is why it's so important to try and restore these ecosystems, but there are also some very valid criticisms of Pleistocene rewilding. Some argue that the reintroduction of certain species would harm the native species that have taken over new ecosystems, and some argue that it's unrealistic to assume that communities today are functionally similar to their state 10,000 years ago. There are very strong arguments both for and against Pleistocene rewilding, but really it's still in its infant stages. One nature reserve where Pleistocene rewilding has been put into effect is Pleistocene Park. This 160 square kilometre nature reserve is home to many large animals, and some of these large animals are native and some of them have been introduced. Here you can find European and American bison, and even horses, yaks and camels. This park is an attempt to recreate the historic steppe grassland ecosystems, and this project is currently being led by two Russian scientists. Sergei Zimov and Nikita Zimov. The aim of the project is to research the climatic effects of the expected changes in the ecosystem, and to see if the introduction of megafauna can help curb climate change. As this project only started in 1988, it's almost impossible to see the real results at this point in time, but projects just like this are really important. The world is in need of rewilding, whether it comes in the form of passive rewilding, active rewilding, or projects such as Pleistocene rewilding. We have destroyed so many crucial ecosystems and important animals, and one of the only ways to help the planet heal is to restore them. This is really such a controversial topic because it is so complicated, but I'd like to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Like with many other controversial topics about climate change and the environment, some people like to take rewilding to the extreme. Some believe that cheetahs and rhinos should be introduced into North America, and some believe that we should de-extinct the mammoth and reintroduce it into Eurasia. Even though I do believe in rewilding, I think these two approaches are too extreme, and it's important to remember how fragile ecosystems really are. The introduction of a mostly unremarkable toad wiped out millions of Australia's native predators, and the introduction of one snake species into Guam wiped out many native bird species. To avoid disasters such as these, it's important that we're very cautious with our approach to rewilding, and hopefully with time we can help nature to bounce back. Please let me know your thoughts and opinions about this topic in the comments down below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.